On a typical workday, we follow a routine. Eat breakfast. Drive to the job site. Put on our protective gear and start work. Much of the time, our work requires the use of one of these. Now, nobody ever thinks, I'm going to fall off a ladder today, or I'm not going to make it home safely tonight. But one worker in America will die today, tomorrow, and every other workday from injuries sustained from falling off a ladder. 500 of us will visit the hospital today after falling from ladders, and 35 of us will be permanently disabled. That's a lot of injuries in one day. Every time you make the wrong choice when you use a ladder, the chances become greater that the one falling will be you. That's why, even though you've probably heard this before, it's well worth hearing again. Using safe work practices with ladders is critical if you want to make it through today and come back to work again tomorrow. That's why we're going to go over the safe work practices with ladders again. We'll also talk about the new technology that's designed to make ladders even safer. Everybody has a story about a close call, but all too often it's much worse than just a near miss. Recently, a journeyman plumber was climbing a closed up step ladder while it was leaning against a wall. The ladder slipped, causing him to fall onto some scrap lumber. Got him right in the rib cage. Broken ribs, punctured lung. He never did recover enough to come back to work. Using a step ladder as if it's a portable straight ladder, that's one common reason for falls. Yeah, what are we doing? Uh, that's the right way. Not the right way. Here's a few more. Reaching out too far. Using a step ladder to access an elevated surface. Come on down. That's the wrong ladder to use to get up on top of the cooler. Oh, well, you're right. Thank you. Or carrying tools or equipment in your hands while climbing up or down. And there's always the potential for back injury from lifting, moving, or carrying a ladder. These are risks that are easy to avoid. So let's start with the safe work practices that apply to any ladder you use. Choose the right ladder for the job and then inspect it. Start with the feet and move up. Are the legs sound? Are the rails in good condition with no cracks, bends, or cuts? Are the rungs tight with nothing broken or missing? Make sure the ladder is free of oil, grease, or other substances that could cause it to become slippery. If a ladder is unsafe, don't use it. Follow your company's procedures for tagging and take defective equipment out of service so there's no chance someone else will use it. Before you move the ladder to your work area, check the pathway you'll take to get there. Look for hazards that could make you slip, trip, or fall, like objects in the pathway or slippery surfaces. Remove the hazards if you can, but if you can't, choose a different pathway. When you go to move the ladder, be sure to use proper lifting and carrying techniques and get help with heavy and bulky ladders. Before you start work, check the bottom of your own boots or shoes. If they're muddy or if you've stepped in grease, oil, or some other slippery substance, you need to clean them thoroughly before you climb. Every ladder has a maximum load rating. You need to be aware of that rating because the ladder has to be able to support the entire load. Select a ladder that's designed to handle your own weight plus the weight of your tools and materials. When carrying or setting up a ladder, be aware of any electrical hazards. Watch for overhead lines or any exposed energized electrical equipment. If you'll be working near energized electrical sources, Use a ladder with non-conductive rails. And pay attention to where the ladder needs to be placed. If it's in a hallway, doorway, or driveway, or if other work could cause the ladder to be displaced, make sure the ladder is secured or establish a barricade to keep traffic away from the ladder. Once you're safely set up, you're ready to climb. When you climb any ladder, face it and make sure you always have three-point contact 
one hand and two feet, or two hands and one foot. Wear a tool belt, or hoist up any tools and materials you need once you safely reach the work area. Once you start working, be sure to keep your belt buckle inside the rails. If you feel yourself start to overreach, stop. Take the extra couple of seconds to get down and move the ladder, even if it's just a little bit. Those are the first steps you can take to prevent a fall from any ladder. Now let's get specific and talk about safe use of step ladders. A step ladder is designed to be self-supporting, so never climb one propped against the wall like a portable straight ladder. It should be fully open and locked in place. Some ladders have new spring-loaded technology to lock the frame. All four feet must be firm on a stable surface so it doesn't rock. Never climb or stand on the cross braces on the back of the ladder. They just aren't designed to support the weight. And if you think we don't take this gamble from time to time, listen to this. Recently, a journeyman plumber thought nothing of climbing up the cross braces on the backside of an eight-foot step ladder. He was a pretty big guy, too, over 200 pounds. He got about halfway up before one of the braces broke. The fall broke his leg, but he was lucky the injury wasn't much more severe. The lesson here is to never climb any part of any ladder that isn't designed and intended for that purpose. So use the step ladder the way it was intended and never stand above the second step from the top. Here's another example. A fitter fell while working on a heat pump. He was standing on the top rung of a step ladder when he lost his balance. He landed on a desk, which contributed to the rupturing of his spleen. Imagine all the things in life he missed while recovering from that injury. It's just not stable up there. If you can't reach, you have to get down and find a taller ladder. With portable straight ladders, it's also critical to follow the procedures for safe setup. Make sure the ladder is on a solid surface. The feet should be level and slip resistant, and the surface should be free of any slippery substances. Portable straight ladders should be set up so they're not too steep and not too gradual, because either way they're unstable. Use a four to one pitch and tie it off at the top for maximum stability. If the ladder is being used to access an upper landing surface, the top should extend at least three feet above the surface so you can get on and off safely. Or ladder rail extensions can be used. Like a step ladder, you can only go so high before you lose stability. Never stand on the top three rungs of a portable straight or extension ladder. These are the best, safest work practices available for ladder use. Now, let's look at some of the newer ladder technologies. These innovations get to the heart of avoiding risky behavior because they were designed with the challenges of the work in mind. Some of the new ladder technologies include ladders that can be adjusted as needed. You can essentially have six foot, eight foot, and 10 foot step ladders all in one ladder. Also, recall that overreaching is a common challenge for us. Some of the new technology makes it easier to get closer to the work because you can manipulate the height of the frame to 90 degrees without compromising the safety and stability of the ladder. You can also adjust these ladders for safe work on uneven surfaces, such as stairs or ramps. This one has wheels, so you can tip and pull the ladder, eliminating the back strain that can come from lifting and carrying a ladder. For portable extension ladders, the new technology includes increased stability because of adjustable outriggers that double the base. Some models have a built-in level, and also a safe angle indicator to ensure the ladder is secure and stable before use. Another great ladder innovation is the aerial safety cage. This ladder is designed to allow you to work hands-free safely. It has a 42-inch handrail, tow guards, and swing gates that lock in place. The outriggers add stability when you adjust it for higher working heights. 
The great thing about this new technology is that it's specifically designed for safety and the needs of our trade. But all the safety features in the world aren't going to help you if you don't follow safe work practices when using any kind of ladder. Close to 60% of falls from elevated levels that occur in the mechanical construction industry are falls from ladders. 60%. Proper ladder setup and use can be the difference between a job well done and a trip to the ER. Obviously, safe ladder use is serious business, but you now have the knowledge to help prevent falls from ladders. All you have to do is make sure you use it, always.